Last time on Master Chef Canada, ah! a coffee-fueled mystery box gave Kagan the upper hand. I want to send one of you home. Which one? I would like to send Becky home. She's my biggest competition right now. And in a budget-inspired elimination challenge, Becky struggled. This steak is overcooked. But in the end, it was Melissa who came up short. Good luck, everyone. Tonight. Behind you more chicken, let's get it on. The top 11 faced their very first team challenge. We gotta feed these people. And when the kitchen heats up. Come on, faster, faster. Both teams struggle to keep their cool. The servers are waiting. Come on, guys, let's keep it going. Needs to be more organized. What's that there? The pressure is too much for me. It's a busy morning on the Habitat for Humanity construction site, and these big-hearted volunteers are hard at work. The top 11 arrive for their first wow. team challenge. This is so cool. The competition is real right now. First team challenge is a big deal, and I'm excited to be a part of this. I work for my dad. He's in construction. He's a tile setter, and I'm like his laborer. Trying to get away from that, and then you bring us to a construction site. I can't wait to see what we're cooking and who we're cooking for. Good morning. Welcome to your first team challenge. <laughs> the houses going up here are being built by Habitat for Humanity. The sole purpose of this amazing organization is to build safe, decent, and affordable housing for families in need. It's an honor to support them today, and you'll do so by providing a hearty meal. As a firefighter, we do a ton of volunteer work, so this hits home for me. It's just such a great cause. I'm, I'm really honored to be cooking for them today. Each team will create a beautifully composed chicken entree with a starch and vegetable side for this site's 101 volunteers. Wow. wow. Never cook personally for 101 people, but I mean, my family's a small army, so I'm feeling mostly excited. Jonathan and Michael V, you created the best dishes in the elimination challenge, so you are the team captains today. Good job, guys. Here we go, guys. It's an absolute honor to be team captain for this challenge, to prepare a meal for volunteers of Habitat for Humanity. I feel like I'm a good leader because I can delegate firefighting, cooking, it doesn't matter. You have to have trust and you have to be able to count on everybody in the team. Jonathan, since you won that challenge, you have a choice to make. You can have first pick of the people or first pick of the protein, meaning the white or dark meat of the chicken. What's it gonna be? People or protein? Chef Michael, I choose people. I don't want an ordinary team, I want an extraordinary team. <laughs> Michael V, you get to pick the protein. I'm gonna choose dark meat. I prefer dark meat. It stays juicier, it's more flavorful. Now, Jonathan, who do you choose first? Well, given that we're gonna be cooking for 101 people, I'm gonna need someone with great knife skills. Uh, so, Eugene. I feel super happy that I'm being chosen first. Ego boost and builds my confidence up. Michael V, who do you choose? So I'm choosing this person for their well-rounded skill in the kitchen, knowledge, and attitude. I'm picking Michael G. I'm pretty honored, pretty excited to see that uh, Michael V picked me as his number one. Jonathan. We're going to be using some light meat, so we're going to need some big, bold flavors. So Marissa. My second choice, this person is dynamite with spices. I pick Nadia. Hey, this next person pushes themselves to the limits in the kitchen and is never afraid to try anything new. Andy, please join us. Reem, come on over. Jen? My next pick has dynamite knife skills and has put up some dynamite dishes. Come on over, Kagan. Thanks, bud. Becky. I'm quite surprised that you're the last pick. How do you feel? I don't really care. I had a bad cook last time, so it just makes sense. So, Becky, being the last home cook standing comes with a huge advantage. 
You get to choose which team you want to be on. I'll go with red. Why? There's some strong people on there that I like. Kagan's not on the red team. Does that have anything to do with it? <laughs> yeah, he's really messy. I don't want to deal with that. <laughs> fair, fair. Today, each team will only have two hours to create a delicious family-style meal. After sampling the food from both teams, the volunteers will vote for the meal they like the best. The team that gets the most votes will be safe from elimination. The losing team will face a pressure test that will send at least one of you home. Are you ready to create an unforgettable feast? Yes, yes Chef! Yeah. The time starts now! With two hours to go until the volunteers get a well-earned lunch, Michael V's blue team plans a menu for their dark meat. What kind of flavors you want to go? Do you want to go Indian, Italian, Greek? I like the Moroccan style. I, I was thinking Moroccan. we could do like a Moroccan chicken. spiced chicken. Love it. What kind of rice are you doing? Rice. I'm going to make an uh, onion base with garlic, green pepper. We can do tahini. We need a veggie. We have cauliflower. And what are you going to put on the cauliflower? Are you going to sauce I'm going to do some lemon, cumin, paprika. We'll roast it, and then we're going to add some fresh parsley to like finish it off. This dish has a lot of accents from like the Middle East and the Mediterranean. I'm going to do chicken with you, and you're going to wear cauliflower. I'll be Rover. There's definitely a huge task ahead of us. It's nuts. Go. All right, let's go. go. Thinking if we go like a southern style flavor through the whole thing. We have a smoke gun. In the other kitchen, Jonathan's red team needs to make white meat the star. So we're going to make it juicy. What we're thinking is a stuffed chicken breast. Stuffed? Yeah. OK. I know that chicken breast can get dry. So we need to add moisture. And the best way to do that is by stuffing it. What are we stuffing our chicken with? OK, so let's put like a cottage cheese, because that, again, adds moisture, yeah. keeps Will it. Will not be too wet, though? Uh, we'll mix it with something. Like, I'm thinking maybe mushroom and. We could do a duck cell in the middle. What's a duck cell? Becky speaks up, and she says, why don't we make a duck cell? And I said, that sounds amazing. What is that? <laughs> it's chopped with mushrooms really fine, garlic, thyme. Salt and pepper. I love that. You guys want to do a sweet potato and a white potato? Yeah, so we do a 50 yeah. 50. Yeah. Sweet and white. What about like a collard green or like a the Swiss, the Swiss chard? Swiss chard could be kind of interesting with like garlic and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. We want to give the volunteers something homey, stick to their ribs. So we're going a little bit more southern style. Swiss chard with a really nice gravy. Let's do this. Let's, 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 let's go. Let's go. Let's go. All right, Team Blue, how are we doing? Great, we're working on onions. We got the stock heating up. All right, Nadia's on the cauliflower. There is a definite contrast in the leadership between the blue team and the red team. So good. Mike V is very vocal the way he's leading his team. He's encouraging them. You're rinsing it? You're rinsing it? OK, you're getting the stock going? Good, good, good. Jonathan, on the other hand, I don't think that he is actually really showing them who's in charge. Becky. What's the ratio? What are you thinking for ratio? For the duck salad? Yeah. You need to put the garlic in with the mushrooms. Yeah, I'm going to throw it in. We're going to put this in there, too? No. No? Well, that's just... too much moisture. It'll be too oniony. Okay. Oh, yeah, but how many do you need? Do we need any onions? No onions. No onions in this one? To be quite honest, her contribution on the whole dish, her, she's almost a team captain. It needs a lot more cornstarch. Cornstarch? Yeah. OK, let's, uh, let's get another slurry going. Walk, walk, walk. Getting the spice up going for the chicken. It's really important that we get this spice rub developed, get the chicken marinating so we can get it on the grill. Got some smoked paprika, some sugar, some salt, mustard, cinnamon, turmeric. The risk of this menu is that maybe not everybody is into the, the spice profile that we have. Ooh, that smells good. But we know it's going to be great. Michael G, how are you making out here with your chicken? Uh, I'm aiming to do about 120. Uh, just in case we have a couple issues on the grill, I'm going to give myself a little bit of a cushion. So you know the results of this is going to be a pressure test. Definitely. How does that make you feel? Uh, not worried at all. I feel confident in what we have and what we're doing. Behind with the big pot. I got the muscle to pound out 120 chickens. So do I. <laughs> you guys need some help pounding? The process with this chicken is, one, flattening it out, getting it nice and thin. We need to stuff it with the Dixel roll it up, bread it, and fry it, then get it in the oven. It's time consuming. I'm stressing about us not finishing in time. I 
I've made like a whole head of roasted cauliflower, but never made this much before. I want to make new things that push my limits and show me what I'm really capable of. Good job, guys. Good job. Oh, yeah, that's working great. Yep. Yeah. I'm in charge of the red rice and the tahini. So if there are any mistakes, I'm taking the blame for it. While the blue team makes progress on their rice and cauliflower, the red team has spent so much time on their chicken that they're falling behind on their sides. You know what? I'm going to get the Swiss chard at least chopped up. Our Swiss chard is something that I thought would be a really interesting addition to the dish. The worry about the chard is just how do you know that there's enough for 101 people? One hour left. You have one hour left. 60 minutes. All right, guys, let's keep chatting. I'm very concerned about the red team. They need to start cooking this chicken in the next 20 minutes. Otherwise, they're never going to have it ready. I'm going to start rolling. Becky's going to start rolling. OK. Jonathan. Hey, uh, is the chicken cooking? It's going to be in there in just a minute. Just a minute. You only have one hour left, OK? OK. One hour left. The chicken is not cooking. Chef Alvin is shocked and quite concerned that there is no chicken cooking at this point. I'm feeling a little anxious. Do not feed these people raw chicken. It's taking too long. Come yes, on, chef. you gotta go faster. Come on, faster, faster. We have a lot to do. Come on. The Habitat for Humanity volunteers are working up an appetite. One hour left, you have one hour left. But while the blue team already has chicken on the grill, the red team still has to assemble their roulades. You gotta start breading and frying. Are we baking these first? No, we're pan frying them first. In a competition like this, we need our leader to push us forward. Uh, has anyone seen parchment paper? I think what's rattling Jonathan the most is the sheer number of components that we have to work with. We need 60. 60. It's kind of hard to keep track of, but he's the one with team captain written on his apron. Whoa, whoa! Get them in, get the drumsticks on one side. What are our temperatures like, Hagen? Huh? In the, oh, dude, like 155, 160. I'm extremely sure of all the chicken that I'm cooking, but someone's gonna leave a burner and then run away to go check something out. I'm on it, peppers. And then some of it burns, they flip it over, they think it's done, so there's not enough quality control. Hagen, how are your, how are your drums there, buddy? Ah, uh, they're fine. Keep an eye on the, the skin crisp quick, eh, dude? I know, I know, but Reem's okay. She'll call for help if she needs. I'm the floater, man, I gotta float. The workload is unbalanced. There are three people working on the chicken. I am working on the rice, on the tahini. The pressure is too much for me. Potatoes are in, guys! We need to start breading and frying. Yes. The pounding took forever, but we can create an assembly line and bread it to get it in the pan, and then we have to get it in the oven. If we can pull this off, it's going to be a huge success. And it's going to be tasty. OK, come behind you, more chicken. Let's get it on. OK. 30 minutes. You have 30 minutes left. Let's get it done. You guys are doing awesome. Let's keep it up, OK? The servers are coming in 30 minutes. We need to have it ready. You know, Kagan continues to leave a mess, uh, just an absolute disaster zone wherever he goes. That's now leaving the blue team with way less space to do their plating. Guys, as soon as we're all done, let's tidy up so we can just pump the plates out. Clean that front station if we can. I turn around, and it looks like a Tasmanian devil has run around our kitchen. It looks disastrous. The lunch bell rings for the volunteers and their families. I want to feed them the best meal they've had because they absolutely deserve it. As the red team finally pulls out their first batch of chicken breasts. You and Eugene and Jen up front plating. OK, keep it going. Meanwhile, the blue team is already starting to plate their dark meat. Like this. OK. Smear. I don't like the smear. Let's just follow that. No, let's follow what Kagan's doing, okay? Kagan's our, our plating guy, and we're gonna do what he does. Sure. Okay? I like this power. Ten minutes, you have ten minutes left. Come on, let's go. Get plating. Look, look how they're mashing the potatoes here. Jen is using the bottom of a bowl. Desperation is the mother of invention. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Okay, guys, we gotta get it together. These volunteers are giving people a great opportunity to start a new life. They deserve a hot meal. 
This needs to be more organized. Are you doing the smear? What are I'm you doing? doing the smear, but I'm fast, and I'm going back and forth. Blue team, red team, the servers are coming. Your plate has to be ready. Come on, guys, it's looking great. Keep it going, keep it going. Do we have any more? From this end, please, from this end, please. It's getting real now. The servers are here. It's pretty crazy. Come on, guys. Let's push, Kagan, Kagan, we gotta push, man. Okay, we need more of these greens. Where are the... I know, I'm trying, I'm trying. I'm looking at the Swiss chart, and I'm starting to think we might not actually have enough. Ah! They're slipping behind. If we don't make more sides, one of us are going home tomorrow. The servers Bring are waiting. Bring it to the front! 101 Habitat for Humanity volunteers and their families are being served lunch. I feel privileged to be cooking for these guys. It's the most rewarding thing I've ever done. Where's the greens? Where are the greens? Greens, greens. I know, I'm trying, I'm trying. Okay, guys, hurry up. The servers are waiting. The servers are waiting. But the red team has fallen badly behind in their plating. We're running out of Swiss shard, and there isn't any more in the kitchen. We're going to have to improvise here. I'm going to have to go kale. Try not to be too messy, guys. Service is up. Thank you. Just take a deep breath. We're doing all right. There's no rice, There's on, no that rice on that plate. Finish hard here, guys. I know it's not perfect, but let's finish hard. Thank you. We're done. Done? Was that ever fun? All 101 red and blue plates have been served. Woo! We did it. We finished in time. Good job, <laughs> job, guys. Welcome, volunteers. Yeah. Today, you'll be sampling the Red Team's stuffed chicken breast with white and sweet potato mash and garlic Swiss chard. And the Blue Team's Moroccan spiced chicken with Egyptian red rice and spiced roasted cauliflower. Bon appetit. <laughs> Hi there, guys. So I see you've all had a chance to try some of the chicken from both the blue team and also the red team. Any preferences? The blue plate, I like the spiciness of the cauliflower. The cauliflower had the spice, so I was expecting that in the chicken, but it wasn't there. Flavor-wise, I like the red plate. It's got a little bit more depth in the flavor in the chicken with the mushroom uh, stuffing in there. I like the blue plate a bit more. It has a lot more flavor. Cauliflower was good. Blue wins. Red has my vote. Blue team. Blue team. How come? The red team was a little bland. What do you think of the two plates? Which one do you like more? I prefer the red one because it's more cooked. Yeah, it's more cooked. Uh, and this one is a little bit undercooked. Yeah, that is undercooked. Yeah. I'm going to show it to the blue team captain. Do you want me to show this one? Oh, <laughs> oh, oh. I'm totally sorry. This is completely unacceptable. I'm going to fix this. Hey, hey, hey. Michael, 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 come here. Look at this. I warn you, two unfinished dishes they're raw chicken. It's clear as day. There's, there's blood in the bone. It's not cooked well. They were enjoying it, but they can't finish it. My stomach is in knots. You can't serve undercooked chicken. This is unacceptable. Can we bring these people more chicken? What do you think? Yes. Yes. What do you think? We'd love Let's to bring clean more the chicken. Plates. I don't want us to be in the pressure test. It was two plates, and it's horrible, and it's unacceptable, but I feel confident that the rest of it is going to be cooked perfectly. All right. All right. Did we in the blue kitchen, I apologize immensely and hope that this one is more to your liking. Much better, right? Yeah. Much better. Good job, good job, good job. We're good, guys. Okay. That's beautiful. Nice job. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. It means a lot to be part of your ongoing work here. Before you head back to work, please vote by hammering a nail into one end of the boards here. I think we have a really good concept. I think we've pushed ourselves to the limit, so it really is gonna come down to taste. I don't want us to be in the pressure test. We all know pressure test means somebody goes home. And I think we deserve to be standing on that balcony. The pressure was on, but both teams nailed some fantastic flavors. As you know, 101 volunteers cast their votes for the team whose meal they liked the best. Right now, I don't know how those two plates coming back will affect the vote. I'm feeling very nervous. I was the team captain, so there's a lot riding on my shoulders right now. Are you ready to find out who won? Yes, Chef! The winning team by a whopping 31 votes. Wow.
is... The Red Team! Yeah! Yeah! So the Red Team wins. I can't believe it. Amazing. I am very excited. Good job, guys. Awesome job, guys. Proud of the team. Proud of myself, too. Blue Team, that means that tomorrow you will all face a pressure test that will send at least one of you home. We'll see all of you in the MasterChef Canada kitchen. Oh, man. We did it. Oh, we did it. Winner, winner. Walking up to that gallery, I feel like we really earned it, and we deserve to be up there. Going upstairs. I am very, very nervous. I usually love wearing black, but wearing it in Master Chef Canada Kitchen doesn't feel that great, so... Uh. Welcome back. You competed in your very first team challenge. It was a hard-fought competition, but in the end, the red team triumphed with nearly twice as many votes. Jonathan, what do you think gave your team the edge yesterday? I think what gave us the edge is that we pushed ourselves to the limit, making a stuffed chicken breast and breading it. To do that for 101 people in two hours proved to be very difficult. The volunteers were especially impressed with the Duke cell. Becky, that was your idea. Yeah. I think that actually gave your team the edge. Michael V, what do you think went wrong with your team yesterday? I think we took some risks with the spices and flavor profile we went with. I'm really happy with how the cook went. And at the end of the day, we just got beat. At the end of the day, we brought back some raw chicken. Absolutely, Chef Alvin, it's unacceptable. I feel horrible that that happened. Whose fault was that then? You know what, we win as a team and we lose as a team. There was one jewel in the crown, and that was the cauliflower. People loved it. So Nadia, if you could pick one weak link on your team, who would it be? Kagan. Kagan? Why? He's a disaster in the kitchen, is the only way to describe it. We were trying to get like an assembly line going. First he was doing smearing, then he was going down the line, like just not staying in his place. Kagan! You think that's a fair assessment? Oh, I'm a bit of a disaster, I know that but I also know those plates wouldn't have gotten plated if it weren't for me. Well, let me ask one question, Michael B. What's your comment on your selection of the self proclaimed disaster? You know what, I wanted Kagan on my team because he is good at plating. The plates I thought came out really nicely. Yeah, Kagan, you know, leaves a bit of a wake behind him, but he gets the job done. Thank you. As you know, Losing a team challenge has serious consequences. You're about to face a pressure test that will send at least one of you home. But not all of you will be cooking tonight. Michael V, we're giving you the chance to save the most deserving person on your team. And that includes you. My cauliflower was great. If I was in Michael V's shoes, I would save me. Michael V? Chef Michael, this is a hard decision. In the fire department, we're a team. The blue team, we were a team. And we're standing up here as a team. I understand, but you're gonna have to tell us whom you're going to save. Everything. Everything in my body is saying, you gotta go down, you gotta go down with a ship. Michael V, you're gonna have to tell us whom you're going to save. I know every day I put on that uniform, I know what I've signed up to do. And I know what I put my wife and my kids through going to work and them not knowing when they see the news that there's been a massive fire and I haven't called home. But they're the reason I'm here. And as much as I love everybody here, we all know that this is a competition. And I'm here for my wife and kids and myself and to learn and to get better. 
so I'm choosing to save myself. Michael V, you are now safe from elimination. Please head up to the gallery. Thank you. Good luck, guys. I'm officially in the top 10, and it's sweet to get to the top, but just yesterday we were together as a team. It's gonna be, it's gonna be tough. It's gonna be tough watching them cook. Well, it's time now for the first pressure test of this season. Home cooks, three words. Black forest cake. Oh. So Chef Michael pulls out this luxurious, like glorious black forest cake. Like the thing just looked immaculate. This is a replication challenge. And you're going to have to recreate this highly elevated version of a classic dessert. I have never made a cake like this before in my life. That means four layers of perfectly executed chocolate sponge infused with Kirsch syrup, a layer of chocolate ganache in the middle, delicate yet decadent mousseline cream, fresh Marillo cherries soaked in Kirsch and topped with chocolate curls. I have never baked a black forest cake before, so okay. <laughs> Please head to your stations. Baking a cake like this requires technique and finesse, and you have to accomplish it all in just 80 minutes. Whoa. You have everything you need at your stations, including premium German-made Mila appliances. Are you ready? Yes, yes chef. chef. The time starts now. Making pastry, as we know, is never easy, and a sponge cake is full of so many pitfalls. I'm not a baker, but I know that I can make a good cake if I had my recipe in front of me. I need to finish in time. You have to make the perfect sponge batter. It has to cook evenly. You need to get it cooled down before you can start building the cake. A lot is involved in this. If you screw up one element in this cake, you are done. One of them, at least one, is going home today. I'm not going home. I'm most worried about the sponge cake, because that needs to be done right, and it needs to go in the oven basically immediately. Kagan already has his cake batter in the oven. I am so shocked. I'm doing this for my boyfriend. He puts up with my messiness, and he loves me for it. I'm drawing a blank. Reem right now is absolutely losing her composure. You can see it. Reem, take a deep breath, OK? You got this. Reem, she is not as confident. She has never baked under pressure. Uh, I'm definitely a step behind. Hi there, Nadia. Hi, Chef Michael. Today, you had a burst of confidence, you spoke your mind, you had an opinion. Are you gonna take that same approach with this baking pressure test? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think this is probably gonna be the time where you guys see why I'm really here. I wish you the best of luck. Thank and, you. Uh, watch the clock. Thank you. I noticed I'm the last one to get my cake in the oven. Good job, Reem. Good job. She's got a hustle. Oh, that smells good. Mousseline is basically a pastry cream base that's had lots of extra butter whipped into it, so it is light, creamy, but very rich. You could make the ganache before the pastry cream because it too needs to cool down, and that has to go in the center of the cake. You only have 80 minutes. That's not a lot of time, so you got to multitask. Get the pastry cream going. Thanks, flying. Get the ganache going. Go, 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 go. Look at those moves. Double-handed. <laughs> Come on, baby. Michael G, 
Mathematically, the odds of you going home is 25%. I think I have the edge here because I can see numbers and make them work in my head quick, especially like the ganache, trying to figure out a two and a half uh, ratio of milk chocolate to cream. I can work these things out fast. Numbers never lie. Most important equation right now is for you not to go home. Yes, chef. I gotta win this. These cakes are done. I'm the first to take them out of the oven, and I'm the first to put them in the blast chiller. This time I'll walk so I don't drop these puppies. You gotta move a little faster, Reem. You gotta move a little faster. Now, Reem is working incredibly slow. I don't think she really grasps what's at stake here. Yeah, it's like it's painful to watch when things are slow. It's hard, it's hard, it's hard. What is happening in your oven? Uh, it doesn't look like it's rising. It's not rising because I opened happened? the oven to check on it. Open and the it oven. Went down. Oh no. I think I opened it too early. Stay confident. You've got what it takes. Thank you, Chef. Thank you. I'm very worried because my cake could be undercooked, but at the same time, I get a wake up call. Out of nowhere, I get this superpower, and I start doing things really fast. We have never seen Reem hustle quite like this before. I don't want to disappoint my family, and I'm here to win. You're halfway through this challenge. I feel really good about baking right now. I'm calm, I'm in my zone. I feel like I have a good handle on things right now. I realize that I'm in a good spot, and I should start getting my cake ready to assemble. My cake tastes like stale bread. I forgot the sugar in the cake. He didn't put sugar in his cake. Oh. An unsweetened cake is not good. Keep going, Kagan. Take a breath. I'm going to soak it in cream and sugar and throw it in the oven to try to toughen it up. Not a bad idea, right? I can make a simple syrup and try to infuse some of that into the cake itself. Like he's soaking his he's cakes? He's soaking his cakes. He's just ruining it. Oh, he just dropped. He just dropped. Home cooks are fighting for their lives in a difficult Black Forest cake replication challenge. Oh, he just dropped. He just dropped. And Kagan is in the woods. Right now, I'm not handling the pressure well, and I am no longer going to be able to make a four-layer cake. But I'm not ready to go home. I never thought I would be here. It's a dream come true. I have three layers left. Buttercream is sweet. The ganache is sweet. Let's make something tasty for the judges. I'm glad to see that you're uh, pushing on. Tell me what happened. I didn't put any sugar in my cake. How have you tried to remedy I this? I tried issue? to add a little sugar to the cake. As a sugar syrup? It's not a bad idea. Well, as long as it's not too wet, it could hold together. Is the cake itself nice and cold? Because your pastry cream is starting to soften already. This cake was too hot, so I put them in the chiller. They have less than eight minutes left. At this stage, all of the cooks should be placing their cakes on the pedestal and starting to assemble their Black Forest cake. But if you assemble on the turntable and then try and lift onto the pedestal, you could be in trouble. I look behind me and everyone is a step behind. So Reem is ahead now in the assembly process. What a comeback. Not getting eliminated. My cake just crumbled into a bunch of chunks. Those two sponge cakes are so wet with syrup, it just started to fall apart. I kind of feel like throwing in the towel. Just don't give up. Please, don't give up. She's right. I didn't come here to give up. I have one layer of cake left but I feel pretty confident I'm gonna be able to get the flavors right on this cake. You know, flavor is king, it could save me. Five minutes, you have five more minutes left, five minutes.
minutes, okay? Five minutes. I get up to my fourth layer and I'm thinking, I still have this on my, my decorating table here. I need to get this on my plating dish. It's too heavy. Like this thing is just gonna crumble. This is so uncomfortable to watch. Oh my Lord. Incredible. Oh my god, it worked. One minute, you one more minute left. Come on. Look at this. The last one to get the cake in is the first one to bring the cake to the front. Coming up. Wow. What a turn of events. <laughs> Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, six five. five. Oh my God. Good job, guys. Good work. <laughs> I can't believe I finished. This was not an easy challenge. And now it's time to see how you did. Reem, I should mention that your cake is a little bit different from the others. You use maraschino cherries, and we allowed you to use this ingredient because you don't consume alcohol. Is it perfect? Not quite. No. But overall, it's incredibly inviting. Wow. Let's try this and see how it tastes. You know, Reem, if you take a closer look here, look at the cake here. I hate to tell this to you, but it's raw. It's half-baked. You see that? I can be going home because my cake is undercooked. Michael G. Chef Michael. I can't help but notice on your t-shirt it says, stay positive. Are you feeling positive about this cake? Yeah, I am very positive about my cake. Good. Is there anything that you don't like about it? Uh, it's definitely off balance. You've masked the sides reasonably well, although there are lots of voids. I gotta cut a little slice and have a taste. Look at that. So you've been able to create defined, clear layers in your Black Forest cake. But the final taste test is yet to be done. Rich, succulent, pretty much textbook. Thank you, Chef. Stay positive. Nadia, I must say, this cake looks almost perfect. The moment of truth. Look at that. Oh, look at that. That is perfection. Thank you, Chef. That's very nice because the cake it's perfectly moist. The muslin cream, it's light, it's tasty, it's rich. Thank you. The ganache, good consistency. Are you here to stay? Yeah, I'm here to take this all the way to the end. That's why I'm here. Well, I believe you. Watch out, watch out. Kagan. Chef Claudio. I gotta tell you, I'm, I'm impressed that you got to this point because I thought for a moment there you were gonna throw the towel in and just give up. What did we call this? We call this humble pie? <laughs> I called it uh, budget cake. Budget cake. Yeah, can't all afford layers. I've gotta tell you, 
In terms of flavor, this is actually the tastiest cake I've had here. I mean it. What? It's balanced. I like the fact that there's not a lot of sugar in the cake because there's already a lot of sweetness happening on top of it. It's actually very balanced. You might be onto something. Thank you. I don't want to go home. I'm not ready to go home. I want nothing more than to be up there in that balcony. This was a very difficult test. It pushed each of you to the limits with very different results. And we believe that you all have a true sense of what you achieved. If you believe that your cake was one of the best of the bunch, we'd like you to take a step forward right now. Wow, no hesitation. Michael G, Nadia. You're right, you both excelled. And Nadia, you knocked it out of the park. You made the best Black Forest cake of the day. Rock on. Please take off your aprons and head up to the gallery. Thank you. I think today was my coming out in the MasterChef Canada kitchen, and I most likely just put a target on my back as well. My homeboy. I'm going to top 10 MasterChef Canada. I'm on top of the world right now. Reem, your sponge cake was raw. But we were really impressed by your determination. You. you pressed forward and you played it a decent effort. Please take off your apron and head up to the gallery. You're so great. Kagan, you know that your cake didn't work out, but everyone in this kitchen admired your fortitude. You didn't give up, and you should feel proud. Now come on up here and say goodbye. The last time I was in this kitchen, Chef Alvin said my dish was genius. Hey. <laughs> that was incredible. Excellent job. I can serve amazing food. And maybe I didn't quite get there today. But there's always tomorrow. Next time. I'm in the top freaking 10. Yes! Don't just stare at it. Open it up! A mystery box challenge fires up the action. This is crazy. And secret ingredients come in small packages. What is it? What is it? What is it? Wreaking maximum havoc. I knew it. I knew it. This is a game of chess. In front of me are nine moving pawns. I can't wait to see how this pans out.